At the top of the family's growing list of questions, why had the U.S. military defenses failed to stop any of the four hijacked planes? The FAA alerted U.S. air defense units of a possible hijacking at 8.38 Tuesday morning. The last plane was reported to have crashed in Pennsylvania just after 10 a.m. That's almost two hours, <laughs> you know, where planes were flying around the skies of the United States with no military response. Coming across an article in the Canadian paper, the Jersey widows learned it had been a routine for NORAD, the military apparatus in charge of air defense, to scramble fighters to intercept planes during suspected emergencies. They wondered about the lack of immediate response by the president and his Secret Service detail. President Bush was in a Florida elementary school classroom that morning, where he sat for more than seven minutes after being informed of the second attack. The Secret Service has an arrangement with the FAA. They would had open lines after the World Trade Center. Tracking it by radar. And uh, under these circumstances, they just move. They don't say, sir, or uh, uh, ask politely. They uh, came in and said, sir, we have to leave immediately, and grabbed me. And, and, uh, and Literally they... grabbed you and moved you? Yeah. Immediately following the first attack, I implemented our government's emergency response plans. If people fell down on the jobs by not informing those who were in leadership positions who had the power to do something, why were we not looking at what our protocols were there so that we could fix it going forward? By November, it had become the sense among most 9-11 families that an independent investigation would be necessary to do what the Justice Department and the news media seemed unwilling to do. We felt that the country was at risk from terrorists and from incompetence, and um, maybe worse. Soon, a 9-11 commission bill was being sponsored in Congress. Senator Tom Daschle said last week that you called him several times and urged him not to investigate the events of September 11th. Tom's wrong. He has, a, I think, in this case, a, well, let's say a misinterpretation. He said on one occasion that the president asked him to do that at a breakfast meeting. He, are you now saying that they weren't asking to block an investigation? We still don't know what happened in those buildings. The Jersey widows were not the only ones seeking answers and becoming frustrated. In New York, Sally Regenhard, who had lost her firefighter son Christian in the building's collapse, was forming the skyscraper safety campaign. The 911 um, emergency tapes and recordings, plus 500 interviews done with the fire department right after 9-11. All that material has been withheld from the public. Sally partnered with widow Monica Gabrielle, who lost her husband Richard at the World Trade Center. Why did the buildings fall? How could, how could skyscrapers just like crumble to the ground in 10 seconds? Never before or since had fire caused a steel frame building to collapse. World Trade Center Building Number 7, never hit by an airplane, also collapsed that evening. Building 7 ablaze at the moment and apparently getting ready to collapse. The largest structural collapse in world history, the largest loss of life on American soil since the Civil War, and not one governmental or elected official wanted to know why and how this happened. Sharing many of the same questions and concerns, a coalition of family members began to take form. Its goal, a formal investigation. Call your congressman. Tell them that you want to be safe. An investigation must not interfere with the ongoing efforts to prevent the next attack. Frustrated with the attitude of the White House and seeming lack of interest from the public, the family members began actively seeking support from the news media. As they're going to both come in there to, to go on any show is not easy, but you needed the public pressure in order to make anything happen in Washington. 
I mean, they need huge public pressure to move them. President Bush signed legislation today creating an independent commission to investigate the September 11th attack on America. President Buckling under pressure, the White House was finally agreeing to a deal. But in a stunning series of revelations, it soon appeared that the White House was stacking the odds against an investigation it had not wanted in the first place. The president named a supporter, Dr. Henry Kissinger, Secretary of State in the Nixon and Ford administrations, to head the panel. He has a penchant for secrecy, which is not what's needed here. There are questions about his role in Vietnam, his role in the coup in uh, Chile. Several family members approached Kissinger and requested a meeting at his office in New York. Prior to the meeting, Kristen Breitweiser conducted a thorough investigation of Kissinger's potential conflicts of interest. Probably much to the chagrin of some of the people in the room, Lori asked some very pointed questions. Would you have any Saudi American clients that you would like to tell us about? And he was very uncomfortable, kind of twisting and turning on the couch. And then she asked whether he had any clients by the name of bin Laden. And he just about <laughs> fell off his couch. Former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger stepped down from the position Friday. We thought the meeting went well. I wouldn't want to be in the way of some of these families. I mean, they're... <laughs> Kissinger was soon replaced by Tom Keene, a former New Jersey governor, and former Congressman Lee Hamilton, who had chaired the House Intelligence Committee. The remaining eight commissioners were all former D.C. insiders and lawyers, evenly split between Republicans and Democrats. Remember in the 90s, they spent $100 million investigating Clinton's sexual exploits a hundred million dollars and they first allocated only three million dollars to investigate the murder of three thousand people the budget was eventually raised to 14 million but the investigation was also given less time than they had wanted a year and a half to monitor the commission leading victim relatives established the family steering committee the group provided the commissioners with hundreds of well-researched questions for which they expected answers That's the official start of our first public hearing of what is going to be an extraordinarily difficult and important job. In We've March of 2003, 441 days after the attacks, the official investigation began in New York. From the outset, many families were concerned by how the investigation was being conducted. We begged and pleaded that people should be put under oath. At the beginning, they were not. We'll describe our city government. As the hearings progressed, the families were becoming more and more frustrated by what they perceived as softball questioning from the commissioners. I've appreciated already his remark. You know, we have certain questions that we, the families, wrote for each of the people that were coming to testify today. And the questions weren't asked. Complete waste of time. It was a, a bunch of people throwing accolades at each other and asking the same questions one after the other. Skirting around issues, not being uh, defined enough in their questions. It's a stonewall. It's a cover-up. As far as I'm concerned, I'm very bitter. I'm very angry. Still, no one was prepared for what they then uncovered about Philip Zelikow, the executive director of the 9-11 Commission. He who had the power to say where the investigation was going, who would be interviewed, what would go into the 9-11 Commission report, what wouldn't. We have found out that he not only served on the transition team of the uh, Bush administration, that he was a person who wrote a draft memo for the setup of the Bush administration's National Security Council, that he was an individual who wrote the preemptive war strategy that was eventually used for the war in Iraq, that he is a close friend of Condoleezza Rice's. We want him to resign. Philip Zelikow refused to resign, and Chairman Keene dismissed the family's concerns over conflicts of interest. Nearly a year in, the commission had only received a small amount of the documents that they had requested. At this point, what we have is uh, uh, literally hundreds of boxes of materials that have come into the commission and we have not sorted through that. They gave them boxes and boxes of documents, but not left pertinent documents out. 
A deal announced yesterday between the White House and the commission investigating the September 11th attacks is proving to be rather controversial. Under the agreement, only certain members of the commission will be allowed to review classified documents from the White House and their notes will be subject to administration review. I mean, I'm a member of the commission. The president has said only a minority of the commission can see a minority of the documents and then they have to clear what they're going to say to the rest of the commission with the White House. The only two commission members allowed direct access to the documents? Jamie Gorlick, the deputy attorney general under President Clinton, and Philip Zelikow. I felt that the fix was in at that point in time. The majority of the commission felt that it was better to see uh, these documents uh, rather than take a chance in not seeing them at all. It's a scam. It's absolutely disgusting. This is important. We cannot do our responsibilities if we don't have all of us access to all the documents we need, including what's in the White House. And with the investigation nearing its deadline, the president, vice president, and national security advisor were still refusing to testify publicly. Yet few Americans were aware of the family's plight. In testimony before the 9-11 Commission later this week, and in a new book to be published tomorrow against all enemies, Clark will tell the story of what happened behind the scenes at the White House before, during, and after September 11th. To the loved ones of the victims of 9-11, your government failed you. Those entrusted with protecting you failed you. And I failed you. Mr. Clark is the first person that has apologized to the families. Clark's testimony provided the families with the timely leverage they needed to increase public pressure on reluctant White House witnesses. The Bush administration will allow National Security Advisor Condoleezza Rice to testify publicly before the 9-11 Commission. For President Bush, it was a dramatic reversal. I've ordered this level of cooperation because I consider it necessary to gaining a complete picture of the months. And even the president and vice president agreed to meet with the commission, but with a catch. They insisted on meeting together behind closed doors and not under oath. President, why are you and the vice president insisting on appearing together before the 9-11 commission? Because the 9-11 commission, commission wants to ask us questions. That's why we're meeting, and I look forward to meeting with them and answering their questions. Uh, why you're appearing together rather than separately, which was their request. Because it's a good chance for both of us to answer questions that the 9-11 Commission is uh, looking forward to asking us, and I'm looking forward to answering them. Let's see. We have to have one story, so I'll say a part, and if I get it wrong, hedge a little bit and give me the next. I want to thank the chairman and vice chairman for giving us a chance to share views on, a, on, on, on different subjects and uh, they had a lot of good questions and uh, I was I'm glad I did it I'm glad I took the time what topic did the commissioners want to spend most of the time on uh, I, I really I, probably best that I not go into the details of the conversation the president and vice president of the United States don't you think they should be able to stand up and 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 speak their own words they should go under oath they should be yeah, in public uh, don't you think that the families deserve to have a transcript or to be able to see what you <laughs> Adam, said? Adam, you asked me that question yesterday. I got the today. same answer, yeah. In July 2004, the commission published its final report, the result in part of the family's two and a half year struggle for answers. We, you know, waited for the report to come out and were hopeful, I was always hopeful that we would get a report that answered my questions. However, the commission report failed to meet many of the family's expectations and concluded that 9-11 was merely a failure of imagination. The percentage of the questions that got answered was very, very low. I'd say maybe 30% got touched upon, 70% didn't. The stuff that's included is the stuff that they really didn't have too much choice in including because they knew what we knew. You can do an investigation and if you don't really want to research an area, you just don't look at it. If you don't ask them all the questions or you don't let them tell you the whole story, you know, then you could write a report based on half truths.